Hello and welcome to a new vlog series I'm doing. It's Noir Vortex here. The whole basis of this uh, series is going to be on the internet, but also learning related to the internet and how human beings process information on the internet and possible avenues that this will advance in the future. So, in this first video, I just thought I'd go through some an overview of how how human beings process information related to human computer interfaces in the last twenty or thirty years. Because the first one's going to be from a personal perspective, as opposed to an overarching view, which would be much longer on how. The ways human beings take on and process information has changed in the last 30 years, from my perspective. So, say even within the last 10 years, the way that I process information and acquire information has changed exponentially, obviously due to the growth of the internet and computing, computerization. Um, so, obviously, when I was younger, the general methods. I would use to get information would be magazines and the printed press, newspapers, magazines are bought. Um, Germany. So when I was a kid, it was like I was very interested in dinosaurs and books. Just the way I get information about those things is pocket money and buy magazines printed. There'd be in the doors, obviously, or often be. Uh, very dedicated to very specific uh, subjects each issue and it would be quite a linear progression uh, as to the learning of um, base knowledge more specialised and obviously the format was very different being a magazine format generally so text Image, associated images, um, yeah, cartoons maybe as well, and so it's a much more linear um, progression that you go through. Uh, you acquire knowledge, process it, maybe wait a week or two, process it again a month, maybe most magazines are like a month, and um, books as well, obviously storytelling, both storytelling, even non-fiction, fiction, and there are much more. Um, obviously dividing lines between those two things. Obviously there's a lot of books that obviously makes them together, like horrible histories for example isn't a good, it would be a good example I suppose of uh, fictional but, you know, not fictional but using fictional and quite amusing cartoons to demonstrate historic history. Uh, well obviously now where, how it's changed in the last 20 or 30 years, well not 40 years, well no, not 40 years is it, 15 years really, depending on the history of the modern internet, has been hyperlinking. Uh, on the basic level, obviously, taking starting from the start of the modern internet so we understand it, which makes, and hypermedia, which makes uh, information is organized in terms of how um, that information one related piece of information links to another it's a much more it's obviously a virtual interface to use or a computer interface I should say really and then it's the HI which makes it your more uh, traveling through a landscape of information I'd say as opposed to having I mean, you're not giving it linearly you can navigate it in a much more uh, relational and kind of abstract way really Your the emphasis is on yourself to uh, seek out information but then take it in whatever direction you can like for example if you're on Wikipedia easy example to understand you could start on I don't know like political systems in the 20th century and end up on a page which is about 
I kind of related to that obviously, but very much on a uh, kind of sub level of that very, very kind of specific history. So you could start from a place of uh, generalness very, and then spec quite rapidly go to a specialization on that knowledge. So broadly speaking, that's how it's changed. So the technologies that allowed this to happen have been HTML, uh, presentational style sheets, um, coming in, and then uh, more recently, websites got like great degree of interactivity, HTML5, Flash video, well, HTML5 video, you know, but HTML5 Flash, development of that, animation, um, in terms of where we're going next, I'm going to try and make this quite succinct, and this um, is augmented reality, uh, mobile has obviously changed everything quite a lot in terms of how people access information, so, uh, their access to information is much more instantaneous, and mobile, and, you can access, and desktop as well as desktop environments, tablets, all the rest of it. Well, the question of where we go next is quite a big question, obviously. So uh, I see if VR takes on more. Obviously, it's very much been using gaming at the minute, really. It's kind of taken off on the PlayStation, but um, and uh, certain I'm with hobbyists more so with the PC. Uh, where I see it going next is or well, the internet. Developing potentially next in the terms of how we process information is the development of how virtual reality comes into this equation if the hardware gets taken on by more people. How and how can we um, represent knowledge in the best way for individuals to understand? Now, intuitively, the way I see it's going. Strangely enough, kind of return to the book format, the traditional book format of it being more of a linear journey. So, for example, in a VR, you could have a VR learning experience about. Um, I'll go back to the history example. You could have a VR learning experience whereby you are either an observer on a battlefield, Battle of Hastings, and you are an observer on that field of battle. Kind of makes it that immersive element to it, but also you get some kind of historical context beforehand, understanding all sides, and then you kind of get an immersive experience as part of that as well. So make sure you're learning in um, virtual reality. So that's where I see it going. Kind of a return to, and maybe some respects like a more linear path that you go along with. Obviously, kind of the best of both worlds. Hopefully, I mean, so you've got a linear path but also a lot of hyperlinked information that you can quickly go down tunnels of information down. Um, as to whether this is a good or bad thing, I think predominantly it's a good thing, really. Books, I love books still. Books should still exist. They still have a very valid place in our culture and always will. And ultimately, at the end of the day, books are more of a thing that you can project your own imagination into and get lost in a lot more. It's more of a relaxing experience, whereas... It's more of a experience that you input, input yourself into, whereas a VR experience or an e-learning experience is something that you you get you are pr taking information on board and processing it as, a, as opposed to it processing you and you processing it in a more two-way process. But um, yeah, I mean basically, um, the way I see VR, the way I see information processing going in relation to knowledge, is increasing VR and AR. Immersion, increased immersion, e-learning will develop, I think, more online e-learning in terms of, and I think it will mix the traditional methods, uh, traditional knowledge bases of know and love on the internet, like Wikipedia, uh, 